Okay, let's do that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Jerry. If we're going to be in person, I feel like I should get a good morning back. But I, I've had enough time online where I say good morning and don't hear anything. We're going to be here. we got to do it. It's nice to have you, whether you're here in person, whether you're on Facebook or on Zoom or watching this later, however it is that you came to worship today, I'm glad that you're here. Couple of quick announcements. Our trivia night is tomorrow night at seven o'clock, uh, seven o'clock here in Saskatchewan. It is the same Zoom link as always. We use the same link for everything. So come on, 20, 20 random questions. I don't know what, they're, what they are yet, so don't ask me. Um, I won't give any clues anyways, but seven, <laughs> seven o'clock, 20 random questions. Come and have some fun with that. We got a lovely note from the La Flesh and District Music Festival here at the church. And so I just thought I'd read it for you. It says to the La Flesh United Church, thank you so much for the use of the church for our music festival and for all of our meetings throughout the year. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. La Flesh and District Music Festival 2021. And on the topic of music, we have Lou Sherry Scroll on the piano for us today. And of course, our music license number, which is A609189 of One License LLC. Uh, and we're, we do reproduce with permission, uh, so all is well on there. For those who are in the building, I will invite you to stand for the music, but not sing out loud. Sing in your head, sing in your heart, don't sing with your mouth. For those who are on the screen, Sing heartily. The words will come up on the screen as always. We begin our worship as we always do by acknowledging the territory. And so we remember today the land on which we worship. It has been the traditional land of the Lakota, Nakota, Dakota, Cree, Soto, and Métis peoples for generations. As people of the United Church, we remember and repent of the harm that has been done to our Indigenous kindred, and we commit to living in a relationship built on love and care for all. Our call to worship this morning was written by the Reverend Miles Russell, who is a colleague of mine here in Saskatchewan. He's up in Priestville. I invite you, as always, to read the bolded parts of our call to work. After the dormancy of winter, new growth springs to life. Birds return from their soil. Buds emerge on the trees as they discover again the warmth of the earth. The creation awakens to the possibilities of spring. Life shows itself in every corner of the earth. Come, let us worship. Come, let us enter into the spirit of God's creative movements. Come, let us sow the seeds of new life. And so we light our Christ candle this morning, remembering the life of Christ, the death of Christ, and the resurrection in this Easter season. We light it so that we remember that life, the life of Christ is not only within these walls, but also in our hearts. Our prayer of approach today was also written by a colleague of mine, the Reverend Phil Hobbs, who was actually my predecessor at my last pastoral charge and was a mentor of mine. I invite you to say these words together. Gracious and loving God, in this season of spring, we gather in worship, aware of the beauty of the world still unfolding. As we worship today, we would hear again 
your call to live with respect in creation and to love and serve others. Breathe your Holy Spirit into us as we encounter you in music, Bible reading, prayer, and preaching. May we experience anew your life-giving presence that we might be renewed, restored, and equipped to be your people, following Jesus in the way. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 300 in Voices United, God Whose Farm is All Creation. I invite you to stand. Notice the last line. It grew and became a tree. 
and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. The mustard seed became a home and a place of rest for the birds. I've never noticed that before this year, but it feels more important to me this time around. The realm of God is a place to make a nest. The life that is growing in us is not for the soul or even necessarily the primary purpose of spreading more seeds in this parable. It is so others may find in the kingdom's branches a resting place, find a welcoming place to nest. And so I wonder, what does that mean for our faith? What would it look like to move from purposely trying to produce more seeds to growing into a place of safety for all? What would that kind of hospitality look like in our church? What would that kind of hospitality look like in our individual lives of faith? What does it mean for the vision of God and God's realm to grow from a tiny mustard seed into a tree big enough to support the multitudes? The Reverend Miles Russell, who we use the call to worship from, said this, Seeds are a miracle of life. They are the sign of what is possible. They speak to the abundance that God intends for the creation. The seeds we sow in gardens and fields are meant for blessing. The seeds we sow in our acts of compassion, healing, peacemaking, and justice-seeking, small as they may seem, like the mustard seed, are also meant to bless. The seeds we sow are intended to produce a harvest far beyond the tiny seed we start with. And so today, we give thanks for and bless the physical seeds and those who sow it, tend it, and harvest it. We also remember and give thanks for the seeds that have been sown in us, in this community, and in people of faith throughout the world. We have been blessed to be a blessing. The seeds of the kingdom have been planted in our carefully cleared and tilled soil, watered and weeded with tender care. It may seem sometimes like the seed is planted so deep within us that the final tree will never see the sun. But the promise of God's life is that this is a seed that grows and grows and grows. If we continue to nurture it, this tree of God's realm will burst out of each of us, making a forest of safety and rest for all. Amen. And so today it is our blessing of the seeds of service, but there's, there's more to to gardening and to farming than just the seeds. And so we have representation here on our community table of a few other things. The prayers come from worship from the ground up, a worship resource for town and country congregations from, I don't even know how to pronounce this, somewhere in Iowa, for the Center for Theology and the Land. So if you brought seeds or soil or tools or whatever you brought with you, I invite you to pick them up now as we bless them. So we have our prayer for the seeds. Let us pray. Creating God. You have given seed for the sower. Nourish, protect, and bless the seeds and the bulbs which are sown in hope. May they bring forth bountiful fruit and beauty.
giver of life. Thank you for soil in which nature awakens new life. Thank you for the smell of freshly tilled earth, the beauty of a cleanly cut furrow and a well-plowed field. Help us to be good stewards of the land. Sustaining God, thank you for water. Thank you for the way it cools the earth and hydrates the land. Thank you for the smell of the earth after the rain has fallen. We ask that the rain come as often as is needed so that crops and gardens may flourish. Working God, thank you for our hands and the tools we use to till the soil, to plant the seeds and bulbs, to weed our gardens and fields. May our efforts be to your glory, providing food for the hungry, beauty for our souls, and gardens of calm in a busy world. Friends, at the beginning of time, God looked at all creation and pronounced it very good. May those same words echo through the heavens and the earth today, and may your seeds and your labor be blessed and be a blessing. In the name of the one who is our sower, seed, and harvester, we pray. As people of the United Church of Canada, we proclaim our faith in so, so many ways, but one of my favorites is through the words of a new creed. I invite you at this time to say these words with me, and as, I, as you say them, to, to really listen and hear what it is that we are saying. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. <laughs> Giving thanks for all that we have been given, we offer ourselves back to God, our time, our talents, and our treasure. All that we are, we offer to God's work in this place. And so as we think about what it is that we offer, I invite you to listen to or sing the words of our offertory hymn. And if you remember last week, I taught you some sign for it. So feel free to use that again this week as well. <laughs>
United Church author. I found it, I love the words, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out who wrote it. There are all sorts of churches had it posted, but nobody seemed to know who was the actual author of it. So I invite you to keep in mind as we pray those who are named in our bulletin, those you know of our community and of our world who also are in need of prayers. I've been asked to keep Cecil Reisner in our prayers as well from the brain. Uh, he's doing better today, but he is in the hospital currently. And so they've asked for, uh, for some prayers for him. Let us pray. God eternal, our times are held within our, your hands. Our lives are shaped by your design from before our birth. You take hold of what has happened and nurture within it what you wish to be. Like the wise mother, you give us both freedom and guidance. How wise and caring you are, most blessed God. We praise you and thank you. God eternal, our times are open to your spirit. Our lives await your touch. God of mercy, fountain of loving care, wellspring of blessing, and source of our hope, help us to break through the dry surface of our parched lives to find the life that flows beneath, quietly, deeply, cool with refreshment, that living water for our souls, which is the spirit of Christ, your son. We ask you for these, your gifts, for all in hospital or nursing home, healing and encouragement. For all living with long-term threats to their health or well-being, patience and endurance. For all who are worried, ease of heart. For all who are lonely, some human contact. For whom all who are anxious about their job or are looking for work, fortitude. For all who are wondering what path in life to take, a sense of being able to trust that you, God, will guide them. We ask all this in the name of your child, Jesus, as we pray in the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is number 307 in Voices United, Touch the Earth Lightly. And I invite you, if you're here in the sanctuary or if you're at home, I guess, as well, to stand as you are able.
the words to that final verse, the second line there, the God of the seedling, the snow, and the sun. It seems appropriate when we're blessing the seeds the day before we're supposed to get a snowstorm. So friends, go from this place of worship, knowing that you are blessed to be a blessing. And as you go, may you go with that blessing and love of God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, Jesus, who is our elder brother, and the Holy Spirit of life within you this day and evermore. Amen. Oh,